as you leave what I call maybe the abstract room with onsa geometrica, with square and triangle, with the washing machine, you also enter this kind of other film exhibition in, in the long corridor that leads you to the beginning of the uh, exhibition. And you are there, I would say, like a, almost a different approach to their filmmaking, uh, but it, which is also related in a way to the history of film. I would say there were, like among other, two major directions in this room. First, their, their exploration of, of the occult, of telepathy, of event uh, invented fiction uh, that the stage, for instance, you have this rope becoming a snake, being domesticated, this man playing uh, the music also to a cockroach, this man eating stones to record, project, give us access to a world which is almost hallucinated, a world that belongs to an, another dimension of, uh, of reality. And you cannot disconnect that to their, also their attempt to uh, 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 distort our approach to time. There is, through the distortion of their approach to time, there is this detor distortion of an approach to the, uh, the, the reality we can rationally or irrationally perceive their approach to time, slowing down the time, using a time which is anachronistic to actually present a parallel reality. There is the same with this, this approach of a quasi-telepathy, where for, there is a beautiful film where you see a man with this pendulum and the movement of the pendulum is slowly affecting the nature around the pendulum. In all the film, the distortion of time, the temporal distortion, the, the exploration of the occult, telepathy, the speculative fiction that they create that flirt with the notion of anthropological film, I might just be there to give us a sense of what is impenetrable the reality that we cannot perceive, to draw the line between what's visible, what's not visible, and what matters. And uh, maybe also it's a way for them to question the validity of historical narrative, representation of science and nature uh, that are the backbone of cultural enlightenment that we are still living on. And at the end of this long necklace and corridor and constellation of moving images, there is this beautiful image uh, that either lead you in or lead you out of this floor, which is a Columbus column, which is the image of this man building an endless column out of eggs. Of course, it brings together uh, a lot of references. The endless column is, of course, a way to bring to the picture Constantin Brancusi icon of 20th century sculpture, this endless uh, geometrical column. But there is also this notion, this whether it's a a myth, again, a mythology, or uh, a fiction, or facts of Columbus eggs. This uh, challenge that Christopher Columbus gave um, to his peer to balance an egg on the table. And of course, the egg was not balanced. And then he showed them how to do it. He took the egg and with a little art push, leveled the bottom of the eggs, so the egg was standing. And this very simple gesture that everybody can repeat, and once you see it, you're like, of course I can do it, but you can only do it once you see it the first time. And I think this very simple image of this man recreating Columbus egg for the endless columns of eggs is just a, a very, for me, simple sign 
or maybe uh, the beginning of an answer of what all the attempts, all the experimentation of Gushmao and Paiva are, their humor too, uh, this idea that what they do, this manipulation, the way they use light, their, uh, 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 the play between light and enlightenment, is all, all goes back to this very simple gesture which is the gesture of creativity and how one can find creativity in every corner of life, art and science. It's also very important before leaving the exhibition that you make a little detour by coming to the parking garage and an exhibition that also covers different aspects of their, uh, of their work, aspects that are also initiated a little bit or suggested earlier in the exhibition. For instance, you will have this rela relationship to time that we, uh, we talked about, this notion of invented time, I would say, that they uh, uh, offer us through their manipulation of the recording devices or shooting with very, very high-speed camera. You have it, for instance, with this absolutely mesmerizing image of a man, a Japanese man, sleeping in a bullet train, the bullet train, the Shinkansen that goes from Tokyo to Kyoto in Japan. And the way they shot it with high speed, uh, the way they created this slow motion, actually create one of the most uh, anachronistic image one can think of as you see this man, this man, sleeping, so their time is suspended, is suspended because of sleep, but also they are moving at very high speed, so their time is suspended in the fastest vehicle one can think of, uh, but the image projected is almost a still image, as if they manage to uh, slow down the train to the speed or the time created by the pace of, of sleep. You also have this relationship to time with the, 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 the sleeping flamingo or the cow fish, the fish which he is uh, uh, suspended in time because of the same devices, the same invention of time on a plate, suspended in time, and difficult to say whether the fish is not living or agonizing. And they create often this very ambiguous image. You have actually one at the entrance of the exhibition with a the photo of a cat suspended in the air as the cat was dropped from the second floor of their studio uh, but captured by photography as they have installed a motion detector that just captures this uh, a floating moment where the cat is frozen in the air. In the garage you also have the, the film called Projector Camera Test, which is almost this image of the camera shooting itself, as if the camera itself, the projector itself, has the, the awareness, the conscious of its own function, or you have the one of, for, for me, which is one of the most fascinating image that they have, voltage con converter. And both uh, voltage converter and projector camera test, for me, are this attempt to capture this first uh, moment of consciousness. Upstairs, I talk about this, this ritual, uh, this inter interest that the artists have in the occult. And you have a wonderful uh, film here called Papagayo, where uh, a little bit like in, in Jean Rouge's famous film, Les, uh, Les Maîtres Fous, you see a group of people under some influence, living, entering, acting in a world that seems to be uh, absolutely parallel uh, to the world we, we live in, almost as if they were uh, uh, living in a world that they are hallucinating 
as they are experiencing it in a world which is absolutely occult to us, a world that only them actually can see, a world which is only visible with their alter, altered state of consciousness. The work of Bushman and Paiva has this incredible value of bringing together, besides the incredible visual experience that they offer, they bring together Pythagore, Vitruve, Darwin, Jarry, Marcel Proust, Marcel Duchamp, the Muybridge. They bring together, through this uh, uh, distortion of time, this interest in the science of optics, a world of cultural reference which goes beyond the images that they show us and really address what it means to produce an image and leave a trace today.